that was easy. Hi, so I want to talk about something called the polynomial hierarchy. And you may think, what in the world is happening here? Don't worry, I'll explain it all. So the question that we want to answer here is if p is equal to np, so therefore if we can solve any non-deterministic polytime problem in deterministic time, what else is in p? Because if these are equal, maybe other things are also in there too. Maybe things that are in polynomial space are also in there. And so this is a question to, if we can put so many things into p that leads to a contradiction, like maybe exponential time is equal to p, which is not possible, then we can show that this supposition is false. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't actually work that way, but it was a good attempt to try to get there. I want to tell you about this anyway, because it's a natural way of trying to prove some, some important things in this area. So the hierarchy is this big diagram on the left. So what is this diagram actually showing? So we have P down here, so that's the usual deterministic polytime. We have NP right here, that's just normal NP, and co-NP, and those are the set of languages whose complements are in P, uh, are in NP, sorry. So what are these other ones right here? I'll explain the arrows in a bit, but what are these other ones? So this right here, where I have NP raised to the power NP, you may wonder what in the world does that mean? So that is what's called an Oracle Turing machine. So let's say that we have uh, some problem A raised to the power B, and this generalizes to a class of languages in, in a very easy way. What the, so if A and B are languages, what this means is that any algorithm for this has instant access to s some language in B. So in fact, if B is just a single language, you have an instant solver for B. So here we have some algorithm with instant access or solution to B. You can instantly solve B in zero time. It takes time to write down the question of what the thing you want to answer is whether the string is in B or not, but you can have instant access to it, which is not necessarily the most natural way of thinking about computation, but it turns out to be very relevant here. But here, this just means we have instant access to some language in B. So let's think about NP for a sec. Well, then that means you can pick any language that you want, say like SAT, for example, and you, you can write down a formula and it'll instantly tell you whether or not that formula is satisfiable or not. And so therefore, NP to the raised to the power NP means that I have non-deterministic polynomial number of queries to a SAT oracle. So in fact, I can write down polynomially many SAT formulas and it will solve all of them in non-deterministic polynomial time. In fact, you can even do that in deterministic polynomial time, but we're allowed non-determinism on top of that, which is pretty cool. And co-NP raised to the power of co-NP is the same idea over here. And we have we can have three levels right here and three levels of three of co NP and we can have four levels five levels six levels etc as many levels as we as we like and the polynomial hierarchy which I'm going to call PH is going to be the union over all of these levels so effectively um, take all of the levels right here and so all of the languages right here and just union them all together. And one thing that you can pretty easily show is that all of these are a subset of P space. So if you have a polynomial space algorithm and you had instant access to a, another polynomial space algorithm, then you can solve all of those without an oracle in polynomial space. So like if the problem A, let's say is a polynomial space algorithm, let's say it runs an N to the K time and B runs in n to the l time for some other integer l probably, then what we can do to simulate this without an oracle is to actually run the b algorithm. And that will take n to the k l in the exponent amount of space, and that certainly is polynomial. 
So it's pretty easy to see because each one of these levels is a subset of p-space, then the polynomial hierarchy is a subset of p-space, uh, which is what I claim here. Okay, so then what we have effectively is that we have that p is a subset of np, and what we originally had was that this is a subset of p-space. Then what we have now is that p is a subset of np, which is a subset of the second level, which is a subset of the third level, etc. So we have this infinite chain of inclusions, and all of them are a subset of p-space. So then the question is, if we can prove, for example, that the second level is not equal to the third level, then that will separate NP from P-space. And so therefore, that will get us um, what we believe to be true, but we haven't actually proved that, of course, yet. And of course, none of these inclusions are known to be strict because we don't even know if P is different from P-space. We do know, however, that p is different than exponential time, which I'm going to call x time right here. And these two on the ends are not the same, provably, by the time hierarchy theorem that we've proven on this channel before. So some of these, or at least one of these inclusions, is strict, but we don't know any of them as of yet. And one other thing that is possible is that maybe that there's only a finite number of levels. So as an example, so let's suppose that the second level, I'm just supposing if the second level here is equal to the third level, so the languages in both of these levels are the same, then if we raise the power of NP, let's say, then effectively we can show that, we, that this is equal to the fourth level because getting us an oracle to an NP machine, let's say, doesn't get us more power according to this. And so therefore, this is equi uh, effectively equivalent to the second level. The third is equivalent to the second. So if we take another power for four levels, we're not going to escape the clutches of this equality sign right here. So effectively, we're going to get all of these as being equal to each other. And we don't believe that this is actually the case, because if you think about it, having instant access to solve a SAT formula and doing that polynomially many times, I think is a lot more powerful than just one call to set, essentially, because that's an NP problem. And so we don't know whether these are strict or not, but it's very clear, or at least somewhat clear, <laughs> that they should be different, because it seems like it's just so much more power compared to the NP one. But then again, for P space, that's not true. P space is equal to uh, calling an oracle to itself. And so uh, maybe that they're the same for a time, but we just don't know the answer to that. Okay, so I want to prove something kind of interesting about the polynomial hierarchy. So we have P space completeness, we have NP completeness. Is there a polynomial hierarchy completeness? And it turns out no, <laughs> uh, or at least we don't believe there to be. So let's just say if there is a polynomial hierarchy complete language, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that uh, for completeness, you have to be in the polynomial hierarchy here, and you must have a polynomial time reduction, which is basically what we've been doing this whole time. And P had poly time reductions, P space had poly time reductions, this lives in the middle, so therefore we should have poly time reductions. Then what we can prove here is that pH has a finite number of levels. And we obviously believe, based on the discussion we just had, that this is probably not true, so it's unlikely that there's no pH complete language. And uh, if there isn't one, so really if there isn't one, then that will actually separate pH from P space and actually NP too, because, because NP has a complete language, P space has a complete language, and if pH doesn't have a complete language, then they can't be the same. So let's actually think about what the pH actually says. So let's say that this language I'm going to call L right here. And 
because it's pH complete, it lives in one of these levels somewhere. So let's say that it's in the jth level. So based off of this, L is in, let's call it the jth level. It's in some level, I have, I have no idea. But that means that every language in pH poly time reduces to this thing. That's the whole definition of it. So for all languages B in the polynomial hierarchy, we have that B poly reduces to L right here because that's what the definition of completeness is over poly time reductions. But this is going to show that you have a finite number of levels because this says every language in pH reduces to this thing, which means that every single language in pH can effectively be solved in the jth level amount of time because that's what L does. Polynomial time is at most the amount of time taken in total because pH contains all polynomial time things. It contains P. And so therefore, what we effectively have shown here is that pH is a subset of the jth level. And that's the conclusion that we have here that has only a finite number of levels. So it might be that the lower levels under J are different. That's definitely possible and is not ruled out by this. But if this is the case, then the jth level is equal to the j plus first level because the jth level by definition is a subset of the j plus first level and this tells us that it, j plus first is a subset of the jth and so therefore they must be equal and so therefore we only have a finite number of levels so there is a more formal definition of the polynomial hierarchy i don't think it's really that useful, at least at the beginning stages, to understand the true technicalities here. It's just to understand what an oracle is. It's just instant access to a particular language in maybe a collection of languages or maybe a single one. It just really depends on the notation that's used. But what we've shown here is that the polynomial hierarchy has this weird behavior that it's unlikely to behave like its neighbors, NP and P space because it's unlikely that it has a complete language, but we haven't actually shown that it doesn't have one yet. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about the polynomial hierarchy into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.